I lived in Japan for one year as part of my degree. And when I returned to the UK, I found myself feeling really down. For the first few months, I couldn't watch anything related to Japan because I got this overwhelming feeling of sadness. It felt like a piece of me was missing, and I swear I could feel physical pain right here. Back then, I had no idea how to deal with these emotions because I had never had a problem with homesickness. And homesickness isn't really applicable to missing a country you've lived in for only a year. Or at least that's what people say. A few years have passed since then, and I got over this feeling of sadness. Now it's just warm, nostalgic memories. But part of my process for overcoming that was narrowing down the things I missed the most about Japan. So here we go. Traveling in Japan is so convenient, especially compared to the UK. And it's also much cheaper than I was expecting. You can get to pretty much anywhere you want unless you're going like really deep into the countryside and then it becomes a little bit trickier. But you can still get there. And it doesn't take forever. And it doesn't cost my kidney. And most importantly, transport is reliable. It's on time. You know it will arrive. I truly, truly miss that. Because here in London, anytime I'm going to go on the tube, I have to check tube status and see what lines are working, what lines are not working properly, minor delays, severe delays. Can we not? Why can't things just work here? Anyway, that this is not a UK rant. But I also hate how I have to add like, let's say 15 minutes of extra travel time whenever I go out, just in case something will go wrong. And I also miss the jingles. All the jingles, it was so fun. It, it kind of cheers you up. Why can't we have jingles in the UK? Or in Bulgaria, why can't we have jingles? It's only the warnings of like train approaching or stay behind the yellow line or mind the gap between the train and the platform. Ugh. But here's the thing, it's not only the affordability and the reliability of the transport system in Japan that makes you want to travel more. It's the way they have completely mastered marketing their own country and regions and seasons. Now hear me out. I'd say most of us have heard the whole thing about Japan has unique four seasons. And I know a lot of us make fun of that selling point because it's so overused. But there is a strategic point to it. It's brilliant marketing. Because obviously Japan is not the only country that has four seasons. Bulgaria has four seasons. Also, let, let's be fair, Japan actually has five seasons because the rain season is just its own thing. But no one markets that, do they? Anyway, winter is like, come and see our snow festivals, come to Hokkaido, come to our ski resorts, come to Tokyo or Kyoto and experience all the illuminations. That's the unique selling point for winter. And then you also have the unique selling points for food related to winter, for like soup curry and soup curry in Hokkaido. And you also have like the little omiyage, like the little <coughs> treats and special delicacies that you can only get in a specific region. And you go to that region to get that, you know? And then you have the whole sakura marketing for spring. And then you have summer and matsuris and okinawa and then you have autumn and light hubs and momiji it's brilliant and it makes you want to explore the country and if you can go to different regions each season so you can experience the variety that it offers and it not only boosts tourism from abroad but it boosts tourism from inside the country it's amazing! And I'm like, why don't most countries do that? I feel like Japan has found the perfect balance between wild and man-made nature. For a brief comparison, the UK excels at man-made nature, with perfect immaculate gardens and parks and well-maintained national trust sites. I've done my fair share of rambling through forests in the middle of nowhere. They still feel man-made. 
the UK also doesn't have wildlife apart from foxes and deer, so there really is no wilderness. On the other hand, the majority of Bulgaria's territory is just wild nature. Forests and mountains inhabited predominantly by animals, with life spurting all around you. It's a place where you have to be cautious of bears and wolves and boars and other creatures that will happily kill you. And when it comes to our parks, the bigger they are, the less maintained they are, with that feeling of untouched nature always there. Japan has mastered both. And I absolutely loved that I could experience the calmness of walking through undisturbed nature while still living in a big city. I especially miss this feeling now that I live in London, because just the idea that I have to walk through all the monotone concrete and bricks just to get to a perfectly organized park or walk down the Thames makes me not want to go out at all. The only problem I have with Japan's nature is the huge bugs. But that's a topic I refuse to discuss again. So if you are curious about that, then you can check out this video because I am not talking about this again. I also really miss the silence on trains. And I don't just mean the people being quiet. I mean that the trains aren't obnoxiously loud. Victoria Line. <clears throat> And also the general cleanliness, both of the public transport, but also public toilets. Come on, they were so clean. I miss not going into a stall and having to check how clean it is and then deciding if I'm going to use that one or I have to move to another one. Because here in the UK and also in Bulgaria, whenever I go to public toilet, I'm like, is this okay? No. Is this okay? Mm. Is this okay? Mm. Is this okay? Yes. In Japan, it was just like, I open the door, it's perfectly fine, I use that one. Come on, come on, pro ju just be clean. Why is it so hard for people to be clean? I miss Japan. And the streets also, with some exceptions, the general condition of the streets is clean. And if for some reason they stop being clean, it's a surprise and it's not handled that well. Just to give an example, where I lived, we were very close to like a mountainy, foresty area. So we had wildlife, we had boars, we had deers, we had monkeys. And we were specifically warned about this and thankfully it never happened to me. When you would go to 7-Eleven, there was like the slightest chance, like the slightest chance that a monkey would grab your bag out of nowhere and then it would spill. Or that they would go rummaging through trash cans outside of buildings and then they would make a mess. And that definitely happened. And I remember that for about a week, that mess just remained there and it wasn't cleaned up by anyone. And I also remember seeing, for some reason, umbrellas just stuck in fences in random place or whatever or just in the greenery and they also weren't cleaned and removed it was like it was so out of the ordinary that nothing was done about it it was kind of weird but aside from that and maybe that's just something that happened where i lived it's so clean and people were just generally respectful and polite and it was nice to be greeted with a smile when i went shopping or when I went to do administrative stuff. And people would also be respectful to your personal space to an extent. Because they say when you're a foreigner, things get a little muddled and sometimes curiosity beats the respect for personal space. But generally, they would respect your personal space. And that was lovely. the care that they put into the food and into the service that they provide is just on a whole different level. I don't think I've ever had a bad meal in Japan, except for when I went to a more Western restaurant and the combination was just odd, or when I went to a ryokan and the food was just, again, odd. 
like not something I would eat. Like a jelly fish something. Oh, no. Apart from the odd food, I never had bad food in Japan. And I loved how I could completely trust Google to navigate me to a restaurant and know it will be good. Even without looking at the, you know, star system. And that I could also just go to a random place that I pass by on the street and it would be good. And it won't be stupidly expensive. Because that's the other thing. Eating out in Japan is so affordable. And there's a lot of variety out there. Yes, you have a lot of variety in the UK, but it's so ridiculously expensive. And honestly, I think it's about time more Western countries start adopting the ordering through tablets or vending machines. Like going to a ramen place and ordering your food on a vending machine? Come on. And you know what? Because I can't suffer alone, here's a video montage of all the food I miss. How have I ever lived without kombinis? And why am I continuing to live without kombinis? Explain this to me. Why isn't kombini a standard for everywhere in the world? No, local supermarkets don't count. Tesco Express does not count. Those are not kombinis, okay? They are not. Was I addicted to 7-Eleven? Yes. Yes, I was, and I am not ashamed to admit it. Why can't I go to a convenience store here and be faced with a tiny little wall of supplements and I can just buy one collagen jelly or like a little bottle with vitamin C and I can just chug it and be energized for the day? Mm? Mm? For like, what, 150 yen tops? I don't know how inflation is affecting prices in Japan now. But I'm pretty sure when I was there, it was at about like 100 yen or 100 and something yen. And no one can convince me that a meal deal can beat an onigiri. No one. No one can convince me of this, okay? And why can't I just go out to my local store and buy like a 2 liter bot bottle of unsweetened green tea or another variety of tea? unsweetened, no sugar. Listen carefully to me, UK and Bulgaria and the other countries in the world that don't do unsweetened tea in bottles. Unsweetened tea in bottles is a great and untapped, apparently, market. Do it. I'm begging you. And also, warm and cold drinks in winter and summer. And I don't mean like the Costa coffee machines that we have here in the UK, you know? I mean like the bottled, bottled coffees, teas, whatever, put into a warm... How do you call that? What do you call vitrina? How is that in English? Okay, Google says showcase, window, shop window, window dressing, show window, set out. Somehow that still doesn't sound right, so uh, a picture of what I mean. So imagine that filled with warm drinks in winter and then cold in summer. Why is this such a hard concept? Hmm? Vending machines on every corner. This will never survive in the UK, okay? I know it will never survive here. It also won't survive in Bulgaria. Why? See, see, this is why we can't have nice things. Why are we like this as a society here? Why can't we all agree that these things are convenient and nice to have and we should keep them and maintain them and protect them. Like just imagine, imagine when it's cold outside, when it's like minus five and the wind is blowing and it's really cold and you're waiting at a bus stop and there really is no shelter because bus stops here, anyway this is not a UK rant, but so there is no shelter really and you're freezing and then you have this vending machine or with the press of a button and for like let's say a pound fifty you get a bottle or a can that is filled with warm tea or coffee or hot cocoa and not only can you drink it but you can also use it as a warmer okay imagine that how nice it would be but no no 
only in Japan. The umbrella thing was absolutely adorable, and I wish we had that in the UK, which is a country where it rains a lot. And it still, I know it does make sense why we don't have that here, because umbrellas will just get stolen, because that's the country we live in. But what I mean by the umbrella thing is that you've probably noticed that in front of combinis, in front of restaurants, they have like these little umbrella holders and you just leave your umbrella there and you go into your shopping and you're eating whatever and then you come back and you take that umbrella and you go in your merry way you don't drip water across the floor you don't get water on your clothes as you're trying to hold it and do your shopping at the same time it's just there waiting for you and yes sometimes someone will take your umbrella by mistake because most of the umbrellas kind of look alike and by that i mean they kind of go with the see-through umbrellas you know with the white or black handle and then it's just kind of see-through and that's like a very typical umbrella that you see there so they all kind of look the same but hey someone's taking your umbrella and then you're just taking someone else's umbrella and that's just how it works and i think it's a great system Now, I will explain this through K-pop concerts, because that's the only actual comparison I can make. So I went to five K-pop concerts in Japan. And I've been to a few here in the UK. Here, even when the artists are singing, you will hear screaming you will hear people singing very loudly. And sometimes the audio is so loud because it's trying to compensate for the people screaming and singing that it just kind of becomes noise. And it's like you're not really there to listen to the artist perform. You're there to kind of experience the vibe of the concert. Whereas in Japan, when the artists are singing, people are quiet. Okay, there is silence with the occasional maybe humming. And yes, sometimes there will be like a scream somewhere in the distance or near you or whatever, but it's not like all the time. And you can actually hear the artist singing and the audio is more balanced because they know that that's going to happen. And you are there to actually experience the music. And also, at least the concerts I was to, they were all seated. So even if they were front of stage, they were seated. So you're still able to see. You don't have to worry about the people in front of you pushing you or someone being way taller than you and you not having like a clear view. No, you have seats and you sit and you watch. And if you do get up, there is no pushing because you have your seats. You can't go any further. And it's nice and chill and that's what I want from a concert because I'm not the crazy partying type of person. I don't go to a concert to go wild and dance and whatever. I go there to enjoy the music and the show. That's what I'm there for. So I really miss that aspect of concerts in Japan or specifically K-pop concerts in Japan. So yeah. I have never felt safer in a country. Never. And I miss that feeling so much, so incredibly much. Now that I think about it, my heart starts to ache again. Just for that feeling of safety. Because I had absolutely no problems traveling alone. I never felt threatened in a way. I mean, of course, I was always cautious because I know I have to be. And there's no way to shut that brain, that part of my brain down. But I felt so free. When I was traveling, I can't even imagine traveling by myself in the UK or walking at night by myself or just with another girl. Whereas in Japan, we had so many night walks with my friends and it was perfectly safe and quiet and peaceful, even in the center of a city as big as Kyoto. And I also didn't have to really worry about people and especially men approaching me. Maybe it's because I didn't really go to the party places, to the city center clubs and bars and where people were drinking, or maybe it's because they had like the foreigner protection, I don't know. But I never really got approached 
in any way, and I didn't have to worry about it. I mean, apart from some people who are like, "Oh, you're a foreigner. Why are you here?" Blah blah. I'm like, "Oh, that's fine. Doesn't matter." I never felt unsafe. Whereas, just to compare it to here in the UK, I think within my first month of living here, I completely gave up on wearing skirts and shorts. Because some people, unfortunately, are disgusting, and because unfortunately there are way too many people like that here. So yeah, I miss not being scared of getting mugged, Kill you with the knife. getting approached by weirdos, getting you know sexually harassed in some way. I just miss that. I also miss being able to reserve a spot at the Starbucks by just leaving my bag and not being scared of people taking stuff from my bag, you know. And I really miss going to Seven Eleven for a cold coffee when I'm spending a night studying. And maybe most importantly, maybe I miss who I was back in Japan. Somehow being there made me very friendly, very bubbly, energized, excited to talk to people, to go to new places and try new things and experience as much as I can within that one year I had. And maybe it was also because I was placed in classes at university where I was the only foreigner, so it was kind of expected from me to be the one who was, you know, the friendly bubbly one who was trying to spark discussions and get people to talk in English and all that stuff. But I just really miss that part of me. And at the same time, I was also very calm and content with where I was at in my life. And even when I was stressed, it was enough for me to just go out on a walk around the neighborhood and look at the architecture and the little river that was flowing through the neighborhood and just the trees and nature and I felt content. I do have my moments of being bubbly or of contentment. Is contentment a word? Contentment. Yes, it is. Anyway, so you have moments of those feelings here in the UK. I also have them in Bulgaria, but they're not as much as they were in Japan. And also somehow I felt like I had my life a lot more organized back then and I had built these systems that really worked for me and made me feel great and I kind of wish I could do that here and implement them within my life here but I find it a lot more difficult to do so but that's a me thing right that's a me problem Thank you for listening to me babbling on I would love to hear about what you miss and love about Japan and if you'd like to hear about my experience studying in Japan or about how I study Japanese, then you can check out these videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.